Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, I'm taking a look at Gigabyte's first ever monitor, the Aorus AD27QD Tactical Monitor. Yep, Tactical Monitor. Gigabyte makes a big deal about this being the world's first tactical monitor on their website, which seems to be a case of Gigabyte just inventing a product category out of thin air to claim being the first at something. Bit strange, but anyway, that really has nothing to do whether this monitor is any good. In terms of specifications, we're looking at a 27 inch 1440p flat IPS panel with a maximum refresh rate of 144 hertz and FreeSync support. It's neat that you can now use these sorts of monitors with NVIDIA GPUs as well, so there's no need for Gigabyte to make a G-Sync equivalent. Also, because this is a 144 hertz monitor, it supports low frame rate compensation for adaptive sync support from one hertz all the way up to 144 hertz. Gigabyte is also advertising HDR support with Display HDR 400 certification for what it's worth. This isn't the first monitor to use this gaming grade IPS panel in conjunction with HDR, but Gigabyte are attempting to differentiate it from the pack with tactical branding and a massive amount of additional features. At $599 US dollars, it's at the higher end of the price bracket for these sorts of displays, but I suspect Gigabyte are hoping their feature set will get the nod over cheaper alternatives. We'll see about that a bit later. I'm always interested to see what companies do with their first entry into the gaming monitor market because it's not always as simple as picking a display module off the shelf, building a housing and calling it a day. But in the case of the Aorus AD27QD, it seems the Gigabyte have put a lot of time into researching what other brands are doing with their products to ensure that Gigabyte's first product is ticking all the boxes. The design, for example, is pretty impressive. Gigabyte has gone down the path of a more gamer-style design, which I'm personally not a huge fan of. It looks similar to recent ASUS ROG and Acer Predator monitors, but it's undoubtedly a quality construction. The stand is solid metal for the most part, and while the plastic on the rear is unspectacular, everything is well put together without dodgy seams like you can find with more budget-end displays. Right out of the gate, Gigabyte's monitor build quality is at least as good as the other major players, which surprised me somewhat. Most of the game elements are hidden around the back with angled plastic, a large vented section at the top, and plenty of RGB lighting that syncs up with Gigabyte's Fusion software. You get RGB LEDs on the back of the monitor, plus the back and sides of the stand, all customizable. The stand is also very adjustable, supporting tilt, pivot, swivel, and height adjustments, which you'd expect from a premium class product. Inputs as well, all very standard stuff with a single display port input and two HDMI 2.0 ports, plus a two port USB hub and some audio jacks. Before getting into the performance numbers, I did want to spend a bit of time on the software because what Gigabyte has achieved here is pretty impressive. Normally, newer OEMs just come out with a basic selection of features that they build on over time, but Gigabyte has gone all out with the AD27QD. This monitor boasts a feature set that's not only the equal of companies like ASUS and Acer, but it's even better in many regards. The many monitor features are accessible either through the on-screen display controlled through a directional toggle below the Aorus logo, or via a Windows software utility called OSD Sidekick. You get control over basically every feature, so that's the color controls, cheat features, and more. A lot of these features aren't unique to the AD27QD, things like the aim stabilizer is just a different brand name for backlight strobing blur reduction, which allows the monitor to hit its one millisecond MPRT response time spec. Others like picture-in-picture, -picture, low blue light, and so on we've all seen before. But there are some unique things in here that I want to draw attention to. Firstly, there are more cheat features here than I have seen before. Gigabyte calls these tactical features or game assists, but really they're just ways to add things into a game without triggering cheat detections. The crosshair is a primary example of that, and Gigabyte's crosshair feature is the most comprehensive I've seen because it allows you to draw your own crosshair and have that overlaid. This could give you an advantage in games that don't have a crosshair and don't allow on via cheat software. You also get features like a black equalizer to boost shadows, timers, counters, and more. On top of this, Gigabyte has a dashboard you can enable that overlays PC statistics like CPU and GPU usage, temperatures, and clock speeds. I couldn't get this feature to work, and I don't think it would be superior to an afterburner overlay, for example, but it could come in handy again if software overlays are banned or detected as cheat software. The final feature worth mentioning is something relatively unique. I can't recall any other monitor that includes it, and that's active microphone noise cancellation. Basically, when you plug in a microphone to the monitor, 
monitor, you can use the monitor's built-in microphones to provide active noise cancellation of noises in your gaming environment. This allows your voice to be sent through clearly while your keyboard sounds can be cancelled out, for example. It's pretty neat stuff and it works quite well if your headset doesn't already have noise cancellation. So the AD27QD has an impressive array of features in the on-screen display. Now it's time to see how the display itself performs. We're looking at a 27-inch 1440p 144Hz IPS panel here. These specs are also available in TN and VA panels, but the VA selection right now is entirely curved. So if you want good color reproduction and a flat display, this IPS is for you, while those after deeper blacks will need to go with a curved panel, unfortunately. IPS is typically a faster display technology than VA, but this isn't really the case with the Gigabyte Aorus AD27QD. With an average grade to grade response time of 8.41 milliseconds, this puts the monitor right among the pack of gaming grade VA panels that typically have a 7 to 9 millisecond response time. This is using the default balanced overdrive mode as the faster speed mode introduces upwards of 20% overshoot for some transitions. Looking at the difference in transition times between the balanced and speed modes, I'd say that Gigabyte probably could have optimized things a bit further here. The speed mode is much faster than the balanced mode, cutting some transition times in half or better, but due to the overshoot, we can't recommend using it. I feel what is required here is a mode between balanced and speed that pushes closer to overshooting without doing so. And I suspect if that mode existed, we would get transition times down around that six millisecond mark, which is more in line with high-end IPS displays. And getting down to six milliseconds is important for a 144 Hz display, as the refresh rate window is 6.94 milliseconds. The AD27QD can only achieve transitions faster than this with its speed mode that introduces is overshoot, while the balanced mode is too slow and delivers an experience more like a 120Hz display. So this is a disappointing result for Gigabyte's first display, though as it's one of the trickier performance metrics to get right, I'm hoping this is something Gigabyte's engineering team is working on for future models. In terms of input lag, again, still working on updating our test results with version 2.0 of our input lag test. However, I can say the AD27QD is one of the fastest displays I've tested in terms of latency, coming in at around 4.7 milliseconds. So it's good to verify Gigabyte is using fast gaming grade display processing hardware here. Looking at brightness and contrast, nothing out of the ordinary for an IPS display. In fact, it's tending towards an above average experience. Brightness peaked at 448 nits above Gigabyte's claims, while the default contrast is around 1150 to one. This contrast ratio is well below what you'll get with a VA panel, but again, there are no flat VA panels with these specifications, and IPS panels have superior viewing angles for what it's worth. Color performance is an interesting situation with the AD27QD. Gigabyte has done a lot of things right here, but still has a long way to go to make this display perfect. So this is a wide gamut monitor. Gigabyte advertises 95% DCI-P3 coverage and 10-bit color processing through an 8-bit plus FRC panel. And when looking at default DCI-P3 accuracy, it's pretty decent. We're getting a good CCT curve and average with good gamma, and an acceptable though not fantastic grayscale delta E average of around 2.50. However, both saturation and color checker tests produced a delta E average below 2.0, which is very good. It's not elite tier accuracy, but for a gaming monitor, this is well above average, especially considering it's a wide gamut we're looking at. However, things start to fall away when examining sRGB accuracy, and that's because there is no display mode that clamps this monitor to an sRGB gamut. There is an sRGB mode in the settings, but because it doesn't limit the gamut to sRGB and instead leaves it in an unclamped DCI-P3 state, it's completely useless effectively. So when measuring default sRGB performance, we're left with Delta E's above 3.0 across many of our tests. This isn't nearly as good as its DCI-P3 performance, and you can quite clearly see in the saturation chart that sRGB colors are being stretched out to DCI-P3, leading to oversaturation. There's no good way to solve this problem for those that want color accuracy across the vast majority of Windows applications that use the sRGB color space. What's missing is a simple switch in the on-screen display that allows you to set the gamut to sRGB and still allows control over brightness and color temperature. You can nail down the color temperature using the OSD as it is, but that only improves accuracy slightly. I did manage to find one sort of hack that limits the display to sRGB, but it's not a very good one. Basically, if you enable the Windows HDR mode and use SDR apps, it will be limited to sRGB, but only if you set some specific OSD settings. And then you may run into a variety of issues when using the HDR mode for SDR apps, 
The mode has come a long way, but I'd still recommend you leave it disabled for SDR usage in most cases. The only proper way to solve the unclamped gamut is to use a software profile. I created one using Spectrical's Calman 5 that was very accurate, producing average delta E's below 1.0, along with a tight grayscale curve. Crucially, this sort of calibration came only at a slight loss to contrast ratio, now sitting at 1100 to 1, which is still very good for an IPS panel. Members of our Patreon can download the software profile we created for this monitor, links in the description. Panel uniformity is close to being decent, but stumbles at the last hurdle. Center uniformity is quite decent. Almost the entire center area and along the bottom edge deviates from the center by less than 2.5. However, it's the outer edges that suffer, especially the top corners. This wouldn't be good enough for a professional grade display, but I'd say it's an average result for a gaming monitor. The final aspect of performance I wanted to discuss is HDR. This is a Display HDR 400 certified panel, so needless to say, HDR performance won't be very good. As I've mentioned in previous reviews, there are three key pillars to HDR performance, brightness, contrast, and color gamut. The Gigabyte AD27QD only provides a better than SDR experience in one of those areas, and that's color gamut thanks to its 95% DCI-P3 coverage. Brightness falls short at a peak of only 400 nits, and that's exacerbated by a contrast ratio that's far too low for HDR at just 1100 to 1. There's no local dimming here and not even a dynamic backlight, which means that for a lot of content, you won't even get an 1100 to 1 contrast ratio. For example, to get a peak brightness of 400 nits, you have to turn up the brightness to the maximum. But that means if the display is asked to show a modest 200 nits, the contrast ratio is reduced to around 500 to 1, which is nowhere near an HDR experience. The panel is actually quite accurate at showing nit levels it's capable of. For example, when content targets 160 nits, the panel produces 165 nits. But this doesn't matter much when peak brightness is low and contrast isn't good enough. Due to failing a number of metrics in my HDR checklist, I'd say this display isn't even semi-HDR capable. It's just flat out not an HDR display. It's a very good wide gamut display, but it's simply not an HDR display. So that's all the performance data done, let's talk about my overall thoughts. At $600, this is a high-end monitor in its specification class, with models like the Pixio PX277H offering similar specs in the budget class for just $420. ASUS also offers a similar display, the MG279Q for $550, so Gigabyte needs to be providing a lot of extra value than either of those two options to justify the higher price tag. I think Gigabyte has made a good attempt at adding this value, the AD27QD, while it's a wider gamut display than either of the monitors I just mentioned, and it does so with accurate DCI-P3 coverage out of the box. If you want a gaming display that's also wide gamut, the AD27QD would be right at the top of my list. It also supports a slightly wider gamut than similar VA offerings, and it's not curved, which is a good thing in my eyes. However, there are some issues with clamping this display to sRGB. It's doable with the software profile, but I'd have liked to see a mode in the OSD that takes care of it. Response times are also weak for an IPS panel. If you were buying this monitor because it's faster than VA options, I'd probably think again. Luckily, input lag is excellent, and while the HDR mode is poor, you won't find a competing panel that offers decent HDR anyway, so it's a bit of a moot point. Gigabyte has also done a decent job of adding value through this display's functionality, in particular the active noise cancellation and some of the unique cheat features. For a first time product, the software suite is impressive, as is the build quality, which is right up there with other high end monitors. This definitely doesn't have a budget feel to it. When it comes to recommending this monitor, there are a few things I'd consider though. If you just want a budget 27 inch 1440p high refresh monitor for gaming, I'd go down one of two paths, either get a $300 curved VA like the Samsung JG50, or opt for the flat IPS Pixio PX277H. If you're just after decent specs and a good gaming experience, I think those monitors offer better value than the much more expensive Gigabyte AD27QD. But if you're specifically after a wide gamut monitor or interested in some of the unique features this monitor provides, I think there is some merit in spending $600 on the Gigabyte AD27QD. At this price, it definitely won't be for everyone, but there's enough good stuff here that for some buyers, it might be the right fit depending on what you want. While it is potentially a good buy for some, I think overall it's about $100 too expensive to get a more broad recommendation. $500 would be a really good price for this display and $450 would be an instant recommendation. 
That said, I do want to commend Gigabyte for a strong showing with their first monitor. There are still some things to be worked on, but this is a much better product than I expected from a first generation product line. I'll be very interested to see where Gigabyte's monitor division goes in the future. That's it for this review. We have links to check out current prices for the monitors I've been discussing in the description below. You can subscribe for more monitor reviews. Consider supporting us on Patreon, where you can get access to our monitor profiles and exclusive Discord chat, and I'll catch you in the next one.